For a long time now, I have been meaning to share my way of approaching web applications from a security standpoint, but I can't really do that without a good example. A few months ago, I stumbled across 1Password's bug bounty program. 1Password is one of many password managers on the market. After spending a few days learning how this password manager works, I got around $20,000 in bounties by hacking 1Password. And one of the reports even got rewarded the maximum bounty from their program. In this video lecture series, I hope to demonstrate that by merely understanding how an application works, one can uncover a lot of bugs without necessarily applying any special hacking techniques. Sometimes I just needed to know 1Password's threat model to spot when some of the HTTP requests were returning too much information. My plan is to structure this series as follows. First, we learn about the basic components of 1Password. Then, I will show you how to decrypt 1Password on paper. After learning how to decrypt 1Password on paper, we will turn that into action and actually decrypt 1Password together and dig deeper to understand more of how this 1Password works. And finally, I will put all of these together to rediscover the bugs I found. Maybe you can do the same by applying the same learning process as I do. For this video, let's start by covering the basic components of 1Password. I recommend referring back to this introduction if you notice you are struggling to keep track of where we are as the video series progresses. I believe the best way to start hacking web applications is first by using them as intended. So here, I have created three users' accounts in 1Password business plan. This plan is the most powerful plan in 1Password since it allows users to share password items between team members and recover team members' accounts. The structure of the team looks something like this. Reconless Ron is the owner and administrator of this organization. Then we have Reconless Ad as a team member. And finally, I have also invited a guest user to this organization. As of now, there is no vault access given to this guest user, which I would later demonstrate how we can give vault access to this guest user. Let's take a look at what we have here as the owner of this organization. You can see we have access to private vault, which is only viewable by myself. Let's take a closer look. Here, we can save our personal password items in this vault, and no one but ourselves can see it. Also, we have a shared vault, which is shared across team members. Remember, there is a password item saved here, and later, if we can see the same password items as add, the other team member, then it confirms that other team members can see this password item as well. Now we switch to Ads tab. You can also see that there is a private vault and shared vault here. But here in the private vault, the, price, the password items are not the same as Reconless Ron's item. This is expected since Private fault is only viewable by the users themselves. Now, if we go to the shared fault, we can see that the same item is shown here from earlier. But can we edit the password item as well? It turns out, yes, we can also edit the password items here. Finally, we will take a look at Reconless Guests. If you remember earlier, Reconless guest has no access to shared faults. Also, if you noticed, as a guest user, there is no personal fault for guest for them as well. It looks like something we can test or bypass. Now, let's demonstrate how an owner can give fault access to guest. We can go to fault, click manage fault, and give access to guest user. 
Something interesting here is that we can have granular control over guest user's permission on default. We can choose to allow guest user either view, edit, or create. This looks like something we can test as well. There we go. Now we have covered how the basic components work in 1Password. We can now take a step back and learn about how to read or decrypt 1Password HTTP requests and responses. Before we finish this video, I don't know if you have noticed by just browsing around, we can already come up with some good but bounty ideas to test with. First, obviously, and most importantly, we can test if team members can see other team members' private votes. If we can do that, that's definitely a security issue. Or, since guest user is only given read permission on the faults that we've seen earlier, we can test can the guest user bypass the UI limitation and try to edit the password items even the guest user has no permission to do so. Or we can also test guest user can somehow skip the need of the create fault button on the top to actually create a personal fault even guest users should not have permission to do so. This is why I said in the beginning of video that the best way for me to approach a web application is to learn how to use it as intended. Because by understanding the intended workflows, we can create unintended workflows ourselves. And if we are lucky, then we can have a security finding in the process. Thank you for watching this video. As you can tell, this video is just covering the basics here. Remember to subscribe to our channel to get notified when our next video is up.